Hello and welcome to this Data Sage training session on Shared Container. Before we start the session for today, I just quickly wanted to let you all know that if you are preparing for Data Sage certification, then we do have the Data Sage certification self-paced training as well as a practice test available for you guys. So this is available for a small fee and if you are interested, you can just send us an email at learn at nostar.org and we will send you further details. So shared containers are simply reusable job design components that have a name and can be stored in the repository. If they are shared containers, then they are available for other data sage jobs as well in the project and you can use them in, in those jobs as well. So the main use of having a shared container is to have some reusable job code that is of use for multiple jobs and therefore you just need to write that code once and in one place and let's say if there are uh, any changes happening to that code then you just need to go to your shared container update that code and then the other jobs that are accessing that shared container would automatically be executed on the updated logic. So they can be inserted into jobs and there are multiple ways in which you can create shared containers. So you can design a shared container from scratch or there is an easier way where you can just design a job and then you decide that this part of the job design I want it to be reusable. Then you can just select that portion and convert it into a container. Now containers are of two types. They can be shared. They can also be local containers. Local containers are local to the job, which means that they cannot be accessed by other data sage jobs in the project. Then what is the use in that case of the local containers? So the use of local containers is uh, mostly just to simplify the job design in terms of the appearance. So if it's a very complicated and big job design, then you can just uh, like compress that part of the code into a local container and you when you click on that container you will be able to see the extended code but just by looking at the main job it would be easier for you to read that job because of the limited number of stages on the job canvas. In this job we have a data set as a source and a database table as a target then we have the transformer stage in which we have two columns customer id and customer name and we are simply trimming those columns so simple uh, transformation and in the sort stage we are sorting on the customer id so simple logic and now if we want to convert this portion of the code to a container then just select that portion that you want converted and go to the menu click on edit once you click on edit, this drop down will come. You have to select construct container and you can select local or shared. So in this case, we are going to select shared and we can just click on yes over here and it will be converted into a shared container. Now, once this is converted to a shared container, this is how it looks like. And you can just double click on the shared container and access its properties. And you will see that there are two inputs and outputs tab. Input uh, just shows the link it is mapped to. You can check the columns that are there. And you also have the option to validate the link. And similarly for the outputs tab, you can see the link it is mapped to and you can validate the link as well. Now if you right click here and go to open, then it will take you the actual code that has been that has been converted to the shared container. Now you can see that there are two input and output interfaces added over here. And then if you click on the transformer, you can check that the same logic is replicated over here in the transformer. And similarly for the sort stage, the same logic is replicated over here. So this is the part that you can use as a reusable component in the other jobs as well. So we just saw that creating a shared container is very easy and to use it in a data sage job is also pretty straightforward. There are just a couple of things that can be kept in mind as guidelines. One thing to remember is that the number of input links and the output links coming from a shared container must match the input and output links in the data sage job which is calling the shared containers. Then you can also use the option to have RCP enabled in a shared container and that is very useful when you want to make it more reusable. So even if the 
structures are a little different of the different data sage jobs which are calling the same shared container you can use rcp and make use of the common functionality and then just pass on the other columns as it is to the output so in case you're using rcp then uh, the number of input columns and output columns are matched by names okay but if you're not using rcp then it is not mandatory to have uh, common names uh, they are just matched by the number, the order, and the types of column. Now, in if you're using RCP, you are not able to see the column names as such in your data sage uh, window because you do not have to mention them. But make sure that whatever is expected from the input and output links is the same as is expected uh, in terms of name names in the shared container as well. All right. So these are simple tips that you can remember while using a shared container. Another thing to remember is that a shared container can be converted into a local container and vice versa. So it is easy to do. Uh, so let's say you uh, just start with one data sage charm and decide to create a part of it as a container. And because uh, you're not sure at that time that it might be needed by the same logic might be needed by other data sage jobs, you create a local container. And later on, you realize that the same logic can be reused by the other data sage jobs as well. Then it's very easy to convert the local containers into shared containers and vice versa. So this is all about the local and shared containers in data sage. If you like this video, then please like, comment and share this video. And please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe and stay healthy.